It's finally peak gaming season for me in uh, Southern California where the weather is nice enough outside to where I can play video games without AC and not get super sweaty. And by video games, I specifically mean sim racing. Um, and to celebrate the start of peak gaming season for me, I'm gonna test out two cars, the BRZ and the GT86, the GR GT86, which are basically the same car, but I'm comparing this car. Let's go ahead and show the cars the BRZ that was on the screen to this GR86 here that has, uh, let's go to the settings again, that has a Supra swap, 2JZ Supra swap. And I haven't made any engine performance changes or car, chain, car uh, tuning changes to both of the cars. Oh, actually, no, sorry. This one haven't made any engine changes except for the swap and no um, other performance changes. And the other car I made, it has the original engine, the FA24, with uh, some turbo and some other upgrades. And I think these are the original settings. What did I change? Did I change something here? I think this is what I changed it to. Yeah, I must have mod modified it because of the camber angles. So I'll drive this one with Comfort Softs. So I mentioned before when I drove this car in another video that this is about the right amount of horsepower for this car. But a manufacturer wouldn't release a car like this with this much horsepower because of safety homologation standards with the chassis. I don't quite know the braking zones. Taking it easy. It's a little bit twitchy on the brakes. A lot of rotation in corner. Look at that oversteer mid corner, pretty easy. It oversteers a little bit into a little bit of understeer. Oh, too much power. If I could drift better, that would have been nice. I wasn't quite prepared for that. Let's see if I can take some nice lines now. That smooth weight shift into the corner, throttle out, smooth, it has a lot more horsepower. Barely enough uh, grip for this much horsepower with these tires. So this engine without any crankshaft modifications only revs to 7,000, which is a lot actually, but it, it compared to the FA24, which revs to 7.5, it's a significant disadvantage than just bolting on a low a low RPM turbo on this thing. Which I will get to after this lap with the BRZ. With this much horsepower, I have to be patient on throttle, make sure my exits are more straightened out before I can floor the throttle all the way. And in combination with these uh, low grip tires, it does not produce better results, <clears throat> excuse me, it does not produce better results to slowly roll on the throttle because of the throttle sensitivity because of the extra torque. It's too sensitive on throttle to get on throttle too early. I shouldn't say too early, but earlier with lower horsepower. So that's a lap of this car. Uh, 
Let's check out the BRZ. It has a little bit more horsepower. We'll check out the modifications I made and the settings. This is not exactly the same settings. I have high lift camshaft, turbocharger, racing intercooler, and a sports muffler and air racing air, air, excuse me, racing air filter. Those are the modifications I made to reach this horsepower. And these are the settings that I chose. I also have a limited slip diff, so it's a little bit different. So it doesn't quite have the same suspension settings, but I'm gonna drive it anyway. I should have paid attention to the weight distribution, see how different it is. Still has throttle sensitivity. I'm revving out to well past seven. I think it goes into the red line a little bit. Let's see how far it goes. Revs to eight. It's still revving. Whoa. Okay. I need to. It was revving almost to nine, which I don't think it should. Its useful range is around seven. To shift at seven, that is. Again, I still have to be patient on throttle. Especially here, very loose. Still has a lot of torque at uh, high RPM, surprisingly. But having that extra, extra couple thousand RPM really helps on the exits of corners. Like I probably could have taken that in second instead of third and revved higher, which would give me more uh, torque out of the corner. Rolling on throttle a little bit too early there. As you can see, there's definitely not enough grip going uh, flat out through this high speed section and it uh, wants to step out. Whoops. Should have slowed down more. Straighten out the exit to get good grip out of the corner. It's much nicer shifting early, sorry, later, not earlier. Taking it easy through something, something R, whatever it's called, two, 250 R, two, two something R. So I bring these cars up because there's a better solution than I mean, it's not a cheaper solution, but it's a better solution to uh, getting 300 or some odd horsepower out of a car than to modify this particular car, specifically a Toyota. I kind of worded that poorly, but let's go on and drive the Supra. So this Supra comes with almost 400 horsepower. Take a look at the car settings. And from the factory, it would come with wider, grippier tires, possibly Michelin Pilot Sport Cup, or, or maybe this, some Pilot Sport range of, of Michelin, right? Way more grip. And it, it comes from factory with almost 400 horsepower, which is a much more practical solution to having a faster car than bolting on a turbo or engine swapping because at least in California, it would make the car street legal. And not only that, but this car would, which it doesn't simulate in the game, have 
active dampers and some fancy differentials and stuff. So it's a better car, but it also it's it's going to cost like twenty five thousand more dollars USD. Um, maybe maybe more than that nowadays actually. Um, to get that horsepower, it's a better it's a better option if you can afford it. But uh, it's also nice to have the option to tune the FRS if you live in an area where they don't have strict smog regulations. This is a paddle shift. So that's a bummer about this car, is it's a paddle shift. I don't know if I've heard anywhere if they allowed a, or released a manual option yet. So I'm driving this car with the sports soft tires, so it's obviously gonna have more grip, but that's part of the explanation of this video. Oh, way too much speed. Barely kept it on track. The gearing is way different. It should be in fourth here. As you can see, it's a lot less sensitive on throttle. I mean, I could bolt on better tires on the FRS and the, or excuse me, the GT86 and the BRZ. In turn, making those cars probably better than the Supra, just by the weight, that the reduced weight. But again, this car would have the active dampers. So as a street car, the Supra makes more sense. Purely because of those active dampers. Which again, I'm gonna say it's not simulated in Gran Turismo. So this has way different gearing than the other two cars, so I'm taking this in fourth. So I guess another advantage of tuning a GT86 chassis is that it would be a much cheaper option to turn into a what's called track only car and you'd get pretty much the same performance as the Supra if you can get the wider rims the track only suspension like really stiff stuff grippy tires maybe racing slicks and a uh, fully stripped out interior roll cage. So the, from that perspective, the FRS, and, or excuse me, the GT86 and the BRZ makes a lot more sense than a Supra. But again, as a road car, a Supra just makes more sense. I just, know if the, I just don't know if the price point is uh, a viable option for most people. It's just certainly not me. See if I can pay attention to what I'm doing. While well, I drive another lap. Grippy tires make it stick. Even with close to 400 horsepower. So I should take this in third, maybe. It's a lot easier to shift out the exits with the paddle shift because it shifts really quick. It's not clumsy like a H pattern. And I'm taking it pretty easy. I'm driving pretty sloppy, but I'm not pushing the limit at all. Again, it just sticks through here. An easy solution by just bolting on grippier tires on the FRS. 
And I keep saying FRS instead of BRZ or GT86. This is supposed to be in forest gear, but no problem with the paddle shift. third gear nice and sticky tires all right let's watch the replay It's really nice being back in peak gaming season for me. I can just uh, get in the sim anytime I want now. Almost any time of day, maybe not uh, two o'clock or so, but I'm gonna get a lot of sim racing in. Probably offline sim racing. <laughs> Till the next one.